Today we're gonna do something special. Uh, you get me, Lauren, and we're gonna cook a fresh garden Who's snack. Who's Lauren? We're Lauren of Lauren and April's Garden. Who's that? I don't know, it's this channel on YouTube. Uh, we're, who's Lauren? <laughs> we're gonna make a quick um, a quick relish. You could eat this on burgers or grilled chicken or on top of a salad or plain out of a bowl. Um, it's also nice next to a curry. I've made a bunch of different variations and I'll go through one today with some fresh veggies from the garden. We have some radishes. I picked out the ones that have some little holes in them that you might not want to serve to guests, but they'll be fine if you serve them chopped up tiny. They'll never know. Sneaky. We have one green onion that's actually a baby purple onion. And we have our first cucumber. Uh, it's a little spiky. We're going to test and make sure that it's not too bitter real quick. And if it is, we're going to eat it anyways. We're just going to salt it longer. That's actually a little bitter. Okay, so to start out with, it's gonna taste great when it's done. More than it's disgusting. To start out with, we're gonna finely chop our vegetables, starting with the ones that need to salt the longest. Would you call that a dice? Uh, Mince. It's a fine dice. Um, what would you say? Uh, how much? Let me, should I give my tape measure? What is the size of a fine dice? About two and a half millimeters, April. Great. <gasps> Hi. So after, after we dice up our vegetables, they don't have to be very particular. It's a relish, after all. Uh, we're gonna throw them in a bowl. Lauren, I relish in your creativity in the kitchen. That's a real cuke joke, April. <laughs> uh, we're gonna add some salt. I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of just plain sea salt. You can use kosher salt. If you're desperate, you can use iodized salt. Uh, it really won't make a difference. I'm just a little bit of a snob about salt. Uh, then we're gonna chop up our green onion. No, I'm gonna do this last. I'm gonna do it last because onion can go a little slimy in something like this, and we don't need it to go slimy. So we're gonna start with the radishes, and then just chop off those ends. Um, most radishes and turnips and beets and things, you can technically eat the greens, but they're not always that good. Radish greens are only really good when they're super young, so some people sprout them and serve them as sprouts on sandwiches. Otherwise, you're better off with the roots, which are nice and mild. Um, Lauren, is this a fine dice? Uh, I would call that a, a uh, unprecise fine dice. It's not picky. Radishes roll around a little bit, so you want to keep your fingers free, April. Why does the radish look like this inside? Do uh, you actually want to know? Yeah. Uh, because of... Tell the viewers, they are, they have curious minds. They have an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. Well, it could be hollow because of natural causes, like some lack of moisture or something, or a worm could have gotten in it. Yum. So now that we have those diced, uh, we're going to add them to our cukes right here. Shout out to Auntie Lori for this cool olive board. Um, 
and then we're going to give those a nice massage. You can tell mm. that the um, salt is already working on the cukes. It's some moisture starting to come out. Juicy. If you have really strong tasting vegetables or if you're adding something like cauliflower or zucchini that's a little tougher, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and let that sit for 20 minutes or maybe even an hour. For these vegetables, we'll probably only let it sit for a couple minutes. Uh, a lot of people think that either you can only eat the white, or in this case purple part of the green onion, or you can only eat the green part. You can eat both parts, you just have to make sure that the green part's not too tough. In this case, this is fresh from the garden, it's very young, it's not tough at all, so we're going to use the very whole thing. Now we're going to add those in, um, maybe a tiny bit more salt. The salt's going to get rinsed out in the end, so don't be afraid of using too much. We're going to give it another nice little massage. You can see how much of that moisture is uh, just coming to the surface. If we squeeze some, we would get some liquid. Drippage. Yep. All right. So now we're going to take this, put it in our colander. Uh, my hands are, of course, clean, which is why I'm doing this. Look at that color. Wow. And then we're going to rinse this off really quick. Also, look at all that liquid. Yeah, look at, look at it. Ooh, it comes green. out really fast. So that's going to help some of the extra salt come out. Lauren, I dare you to drink that. I don't want it. It's full of salt. Um, we're going to bring it over here. So extra liquid goes in the sink, no problem. I'm going to rinse my hand. I'm going to rinse out that bowl a little. And then we're going to rinse the vegetables themselves with just a quick rinse to get rid of um, any extra salt. We're going to press them. Just press a little extra liquid. That way when we pour some vinegar on it, it's going to absorb it right up. It's not very picky. I'm going to get this back in our bowl. Okay, so we uh, rinsed off our vegetables. We're now going to put in a glug of vinegar. It doesn't take a ton, just however much you feel you need um, to sort of replace the liquid. We'll give it a quick stir, and then you could eat it right away. Um, or you can let those flavors meld together and mellow and set it in the fridge and eat it a couple hours later. I think this would be great on tacos, on burgers, on a salad, on a tuna melt, whatever you like a relish on, whatever you want some fresh veggies on. Um, that's it. Uh, here you go. Mm. How's the cucumber taste? Is it bitter? Great. No. Great. Perfect. It's like magic. It's like vinegar.